frankly, mortgage rates are not going to be coming down. Uh, credit card rates are not going to be coming down. There had been this view that the Federal Reserve might cut interest rates as early as June. There was an expectation of three interest rate cuts. Uh, now uh, that's getting pushed off again. Well, it may have surprised him, but it didn't surprise soldiers of finance. We've been telling you from the start that the Inflation Reduction Act was garbage and it would do anything but lower prices for the average American. Hey soldiers, do you remember the Inflation Reduction Act? If you do, you probably also remember me telling you right here on this channel that that piece of legislation was going to do anything but reduce inflation. In fact, it was going to have the exact opposite effect. Now the chickens have come home to roost. Now watch how this fish frying fool, Jim Clyburn, he's a congressman out of South Carolina, watch how he tries to tell you that this is all in your head. The economy is actually doing quite well. Uh, inflation is under control because you're making more money. Hit me up in the comments. Are you making more money? The real warning signs that I heard for the Biden campaign, uh, Congressman, and that was that these undecided voters uh, polled and then in this focus group showing that they are really suffering when it comes to interest rates, trying to buy a home, looking at their own personal economies, and they're feeling like they're being gaslit. They're feeling Joe Biden isn't accountable. Uh, what's your response to that? And how can the campaign address these feelings? Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me. I think that we have to focus on people's everyday lives. And 401ks are not about people's everyday lives. Congressman Clyburn, listen, 401ks are definitely a part of the myriad concerns that everyday Americans have. He is demonstrating to you right now how out of touch he is with average Americans. He doesn't understand that 401ks are more important than ever, along with insurance policies, IRAs, anything that the rank and file American can do to safeguard their retirement and future uh, income prospects, considering the fact that Social Security is set to be insolvent by the mid 2030s. He probably doesn't even know that. We do have Congress people who don't understand that the moon is a solid object that you have the energy of the moon at night and sometimes you've heard the word full moon and sometimes you need to take the opportunity just to come out and see a full moon is that complete rounded circle which is made up mostly of gases and i do believe just from my own observations from the conversations i've had with people there are concern about things like inflation but what we've got to get them to see is that inflation today is about 40% of what it was uh, when Joe Biden took office. He's telling a lie. Listen, you feel it when you go to the grocery store. But look, even the media is starting to recognize that, wait a minute, we've got a big problem here with inflation, despite what the Congress and the administration is telling us. The Wall Street Journal did an experiment where it went grocery shopping with $100 and it found that the prices of groceries are much more expensive today than they were in 2019. Of course, food inflation has been a real big pain for American consumers and they are feeling the pain at the checkout counter. Like we know, for example, that if you were, say, to buy a dozen eggs at the supermarket today, it would cost $3.84. Whereas five years ago, it would have been more than $2 cheaper. Laundry detergent is another item that is much more expensive today than it was five years ago. Today, a bottle of laundry detergent costs $10.66 on average, while five years ago, it would have cost $7.83. So it's almost $3 cheaper. A gallon of milk today costs $3.25, which is about 52 cents more expensive than it cost in 2019. Butter, which sold for $3.78 on average five years ago today, is around a dollar more expensive. So are potato chips. Potato chips are now $3.26. 
compared to $2.26 in 2019. Cereal, toilet paper, frozen pizza, all those items have become more expensive as food inflation has really had a tremendous effect on American shopping habits. So the rate of inflation has accelerated quite significantly in recent years. And so the inflation rates are down. So we're not dealing with philosopher kings. He goes on and on trying to convince everybody that inflation is under control. But just as he's doing this interview, something interesting happens. They break into the interview to let the world know that inflation is up again. So what we've got to do is make sure that people see the policies of the Biden administration, how they affect their everyday lives and get them to see in his policies that which is real, not what they may hear on social media. One of the focus group people talked about social media and the misrepresentation, disinformation, all of those things mm -hmm. are out there. And that's the battle that we have to fight. And we've got to do a better job of fighting it more effectively. And I'm going to bring in Andrew Ross Sorkin right now because we just got breaking news. Uh, the consumer price index increased at a faster than expected pace last month, a signal that inflation remains stubbornly high. Let's bring in Andrew, uh, co-anchor of CNBC Squawk Box. What will this mean to people uh, in their everyday lives? Well, I think this was a big surprise. Uh, it is accelerating. And, you know, we've been on this broadcast uh, for months now about how the trend line was in uh, President Biden's favor. Uh, today, I imagine they're they're throwing a party in Mar-a-Lago because the truth is that right now inflation has now moved in the opposite direction. So it's going to be harder for the administration to make the argument around this inflation trend line. What it means, and you're seeing it in the markets just right now, is that Frankly, mortgage rates are not going to be coming down. Uh, credit card rates are not going to be coming down. There had been this view that the Federal Reserve might cut interest rates as early as June. There was an expectation of three interest rate cuts. Uh, now uh, that's getting pushed off again. So his attempt at gaslighting failed real time and live on national television. Spending $100 on groceries won't fill up the shopping cart as much as it did five years ago. Won't fill it up at all. Inflation battered shoppers now need to spend $137 for the same basket of staples that they were able to buy for $100 in 2019, according to an analysis by the Wall Street Journal. Thank God the Wall Street Journal, our authoritative source, is telling us what we already know. Soaring prices have become a central issue in the upcoming election, with Bidenomics being blamed by Republicans for sapping America, Americans' paychecks. Uh, in 2019, during Donald Trump's presidency, the average price of a dozen of eggs was $2.36 or $1.48 cheaper than the $3.84 average cost today under Joe Biden. Laundry detergent, uh, another example of um, things that we need but are much more expensive. Uh, it has experienced one of the largest price jumps compared to five years ago. Uh, in 2019, a bottle of detergent cost on average $7.83. It cost $10.66, an increase of $2.83. Other vital items like milk, butter, cereal, and toilet paper have also soared. Now, the administration is trying to tell you that the inflation rate is 3.5%. If we measure inflation the way we did in the 1980s, which was a much more accurate reflection of what Americans actually experience when they spend money. If we measure it in that way, we we see, thanks to John Williams' shadow stats, that inflation is actually around 12%. And that would actually closely correspond to the gold price and what it has done in the past year. Gold is up almost 17, let's just say 17%, 16.98%. In the last year. So you cannot hide gold's inverse relationship uh, to the value of a dollar. You can't hide that. All right. It's been an accurate measure for 
quite some time. Now, I know a lot of people want to own Bitcoin too. Look, knock yourself out with crypto. God bless you. But the fact of the matter is gold's been out there longer. It's been doing this job of indicating exactly what inflation is for a longer amount of time. And when you see the value of gold increase, that means the uh, value of your dollar has decreased. And we see that not only in the true inflation measure, we go back again to the 80s, but also in uh, this 17% jump in the value of gold uh, in the past year. Gold's at $2,361 per ounce. Okay, that's an all-time high for the metal. Uh, so, the Inflation Reduction Act did anything but get us out of inflation. One can argue that it increased inflation, especially when you think about the fact that the United States of America is um, still spending money like crazy. And you might not believe this, but we are nearing at an incredibly fast paced, uh, pace, rather, $35 trillion in debt. And that's not counting the unfunded liabilities. Where's all the money going? Because it's not going to the American street, right? Well, it's going to the Middle East. It's going to Eastern Europe. Uh, that's where our money is going. A lot of it. And a lot more is going to people who are here, but are not Americans. But they are economic asylum seekers, right? All right, so... um. America is in desperate need of some new representation for the people. Now, the people that represent us here in America, they're a reflection of us. We're making the decisions to put them in office in many cases. Hello, everybody. I voted yes on the Inflation Reduction Act. Once again, Democrats in Congress and President Biden are delivering a huge win for health and pockets of America's families and for our planet. Not one Republican, not one, voted for this legislation. By taking on Big Pharma, we'll be lowering cost of prescription drugs for Florida's families. We're also acting on climate, and we put in motion America's largest ever climate investment. To do this, we are finally ensuring big corporations and tax cheats pay their fair share. That means not raising a penny on anyone making $400,000 or less a year. This is what progress looks like, and we won't stop working for the people. Democrats deliver. And I'll let you read into that what you, what you will. But look, take the crime uh, issue, for example. Joy Behart is terrified. Now, up in New York, they found dismembered body parts. All right? And they found the people that they think are responsible, allegedly. And guess what? They're out on bail. Joy Behar and The View and all these other white liberal women who champion defunding the police are outraged and terrified. Watch that video, guys. I'll talk to you soon.